going to make a lot of enemies because you stand. But you know what? It's time that the church begin to take a stand. Amen? We say we want all these things and we want to see things happening. But you know what do we want to do to see God work? Are we being faithful to God? God is faithful to us. So why aren't we faithful to Him? Amen? 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 God wants us to be faithful to Him. We look around and we see in the world, we see in the church, and I'm going to talk to the church tonight. I can't help what the world does, but I can help and try to have to ask God to move upon the church because that's what I want to see. I want to see souls saved, and I want to see souls filled with the Holy Ghost before it's too late because I know that God is still to come, soon to come, and I'll tell you, if we're not ready to meet God, then we're going to be left behind. Amen? And I'll tell you one thing today that we're, that we're lacking in today is being faithful to God. Would you, if you was married tonight, would you, do you expect your spouse to be faithful to you? Sure you do, don't you? So don't you think that God expects us to be faithful to Him? Now when I say these things and I don't get mad because I, I want you to see something by the, by the help of the Lord and I'm going to get in a lot of little bit, of, little bit of different things but by the help of God I hope you get something out of this but I want you to see something tonight that there's certain things that we shouldn't even have to say anything about. Things are so simple but people say well I'm waiting for God to show me when God has already showed you God has already showed you in the word but people's not willing to walk in the light as he is that light. People won't be obedient to the word of God. I see people today that say, well, I know God's able to give me a healing, but yet they want to go, when you see them around today, how many believe that God can heal today? That God's still the same today, that if you've got something wrong, God can heal you. Amen? I believe in healing tonight with all of my heart. But what are you doing to get your healing? Are you being faithful? Are you being asking God? Or are you just trusting in the flesh? You know, we trust in this old flesh. You know what? It's time that people start dragging this old flesh to church. Amen. Because if you don't, this old flesh is going to drag you to hell. Right. Hey man, that's what people do. People's going on feelings, but they won't go on the Word of God. They'll say, this is what I believe. This is how I feel about it. Well, you might feel about it a certain way, but what does God's Word say about it? This is what we're going on is the Word of God. This Word's going to stand when the world is on fire. And I'll tell you what, if we're not standing on the Word of God, we're going to be left behind and we're going to burn. Hell is real tonight. And regardless of what people say today, hell is real. And I'll tell you what, there's going to be many people that's been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ that's going to split hell wide open. Boy, that sounds hard, doesn't it? But I'll tell you what, it's true. By the help of the Lord, I'm going to show you by the help of God. The Bible says that the devil, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But you know what? That devil has no power over you. Only power he's got is what you let him have. Brother, we can go through troubles and we can go through trials, but that don't give us a, that don't give us the right to stay home from serving God. That's right. Amen. Now the Bible says, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says, and people can believe whatever they want to believe. I can't help what people believe, but I can tell you what the Word of God says. Hebrews 10:25 says, "Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together in the manner in which some is." Is that what it says? Do people obey it? Now, wait a minute. Now, I know there's sometimes there's excuses that people can't make it. But there's reasons that you can't make it. People may be working. People might be, it might be something else. I don't know. But I do want you to see something tonight by the help of the Lord. And I'm going to touch on it. I touched a little bit on it last night down Brother Jim. But I want you to see. When you see these things that God has got for His people. How many believe that God has got a lot of benefits in His work? And He's got benefits for you and me. But how are we going to get them tonight? By being faithful to God and doing what God says. People today say, well, I believe in healing and I believe in healing too. But the only way you're going to get your healing is being obedient to the Word of God. Amen? Amen. You look around today. Look around in the world. Look around in the church. There's people that will get sick. And I'll tell you what, this really bothered me last night. This, God really put this on my heart. But I'll tell you one thing, by the help of the Lord, I want you to see something tonight. God is going to move if you let Him. But how does God work? He works through people. Are you lending your, your flesh? Are you lending yourself to God to where God can move through you? Or do you believe God's word? The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen? Without faith, we've got to have faith and we've got to believe God. Now, let me ask you a question. How many believe in healing? 
I believe in it because God's Word says. says but let me ask you another question. Does that mean that you're not going to have aches and pains in this old body? You're going to have them. Amen? But you know what? If, and this is, this is something that the church really needs to see. This is something that we all need to put into action. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing coming by the word of God, but we've got to not only be a hearer of the word, but we've got to be a doer. We've got to apply God's word to our life in everything that we do. Now you look around in the world tonight. The Bible says, if any are sick or afflicted among you, what did he say to do? He said, let him pray. Let you pray. Then if you don't get deliverance, what did he say? Let him call for the elders of the church and anoint him with oil. How many believe that? That's what God's word says. But let me ask you another question tonight. How many when we get aches and pains, we say well, we can't go on no further? They don't say that. Huh? Let me ask you another little question. When you have a backache, you might have a cramp in your leg, you might not feel good, you might feel tired. Does that give you a right to stay home? No, it don't. No reason. Huh? People today will call up on the phone, they'll have a little ache and they'll have a little pain, and they'll say, Have the church to pray for me. Well, are you praying for yourself? Pray for yourself. Do you think that you're going to have pain? By the help of the Lord, let's go back see, let's see what the Word of God says. Let's go to the book of Job. I said this last night. Job 21, or Job 14. Job chapter 14. I want you to listen to what he says. And what I'm going to try to put this together, I want you to see something, then I want you to see how you feel. You know what? This old flesh, it'll put feelings upon you that might not feel good. A lot of times we can serve God, and boy, we can come to the house of God, and we can have a good old time when we feel good with God. But what about when you're in the valley? What about when times when you might be a really a hurting? Not only naturally, but not only naturally, but what about spiritually in your mind? Maybe you're going through troubles and you're going through trials, but do you let all these things get in your way to where you can't serve God? But when you can't do that, just take one minute and look at the book of Job. All the things that Job went through. Brother, I'll tell you, he lost everything. He lost all of his children. He lost all of his riches. He lost everything that he had. And I'll tell you what, on top of that, he was even given boils that stood up on him. But you know what? Through all of these things, Job still took time to worship God. Amen. He did not want to forget what God had said he would do. And I'll tell you what, how many times do we, when we go through trouble and something comes up on us and we say we can't go on no longer and then we stay home and we think we're going to get delivered to stay by staying at home. Do you think you're going to get your answer by staying at home? Is that faithfulness? Do you think God's going to answer prayer when you're not faithful to God? You know how you're going to get your healing? By being obedient to God. You've got to press your way through these things that we're going through. And every one of us tonight, it might have aches and we might have pains. And we might be even suffering spiritually in our mind because of all the turmoil that's going on in your life. But does that give you the right to stay at home and say, I can't go on? What did Jesus do for you? He carried that cross all the way to Calvary. Brother, when he was carrying that cross, don't you think that cross got heavy for him? But you know what? He loved you so much that he bared that cross all the way to Calvary. And he died for you and I. While we was yet sinners, he loved us so much that he went all the way and he died for each and every one of us. Because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there remain no remission of sin. There is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. But he loved us so much. While we was yet sinners, he come and he died for you and he come and died for me. How many believe that tonight? But I'll tell you one thing tonight. We've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. People, they say, well, these things sound too hard that I can't do them. Well, listen, 
Put them in God's hands. He's our burden bearer tonight. Don't you thank God? He said, I'll put no more upon you than you're able to bear. And a lot of times we try, we think that we can't do anything, that we're so weak. But you know what God said? He said, I'll give you power to overcome all the power of the enemy. The enemy does not have no power upon you tonight, but what you give him. You've got to let the devil take everything that you've got. Because you know what? He has no power over you. The Bible says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. How many believe that? If we believe that tonight, why aren't we practicing it? That's right. Huh? Listen. Listen to what Job said. He said, man that is born of a woman is a few days and is full of trouble. Full of trouble. Do you think that you're going to get out of the troubles that you're going through in this life? <laughs> no. But you know what? God's our, he's our burden bearer. He'll carry our troubles. If we take them to Him. But how many times do we get so weak and we listen to this old flesh and we say we can't go on no further? Even though we might feel weak in the flesh, these are times that you've got to press your way through. Even the things that you're going through in this life, don't let them get you down so much that you can't serve God. Too many people today are giving up, but we've come too far to look back. There's nothing to look back to, nothing but sorrow and trouble that's in that world today. And if you look back, you'll have no one to help you. Now listen. Listen to what Job says here. Last verse in the 14th chapter. 14 and 22. 14th chapter, Job, verse 22. Now let's see something tonight by the help of the Lord. Now we think that we're going to have aches and pains in this body. But yet people say, well, you don't understand. I've ached and I've had pains, but I can't go on no further. Well, shame on you. Shame on you. You're listening to the devil. You're listening to the devil. Listen to what the Bible says. Job 14, 22. He said, but his flesh upon him shall have what? Everybody say, what's he going to have? In his what? In his flesh. He's going to have pain. But listen to what he says. And his soul within him shall what? Mourn. Shall mourn. You're going to have troubles in this old flesh. Your body's going to ache. Your body's going to, you're going to go through different times of troubles. But I'll tell you what, it's a shame tonight when we look around and we let these little old pains and these little lakes keep us down that we can't even make it to the house of prayer. And then we call somebody and say, well, have the church to pray for you. Well, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you praying? Are you praying? Do you think God's going to answer your prayer by you staying home when you're able to be in the house of God? Everybody, I know people have diseases. And sometimes you might have a disease that you can't make it to church. But as far as these little aches and pains keeping us down, if you let little aches and pains keep you down, something's wrong. Something's wrong. You don't think that's true? Let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 13. If this don't make people feel, if you look around in the world today and you see everybody, everybody says I'm a Christian, but nobody comes to the house of God. Everybody says, I know God answers my prayer. God touches my body. But you know what? The devil, he can put an affliction upon you and he can take it off. Amen? But I want you to look here tonight by the word of God. And I said this last night, and I'll tell you what, it'll make you feel this small. If you let it. If you apply it to your life. Then see where you're at. Let's go to Luke 13. <clears throat> We'll get on there in just a minute by the help of the Lord. Listen to what he says. Luke 13 and verse 10. Now I want you to listen to this. I want everybody to take this in. Because this really means something. I read this and I thought many times. You know what would happen if we all have aches and pains? What would happen if we'd all have aches and pains and we all stay home? We'd have no church, we'd have no church would we? 
You know what makes up the church? The people. The people. You and I are the church tonight. But you know what? We say we want to see things happening, but what are you doing to let them work through you? Are you letting God work through you? Are you being faithful to God as God is faithful to you? Listen to what he says. Luke 13, verse 10. And Jesus, and he's talking about Jesus here, and he said he was teaching in one of the what? Synagogues on the Sabbath. Now listen to me. Jesus, where was he at? He was in the church, wasn't he? The synagogue. What was he doing there? He was teaching. He was spreading the good news. Now let's go on and see what he says. He said, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. Listen. And was bowed together. She was bowed together. She couldn't even lift herself up. But where was she at? Huh? Where was she at? She was in the church or in the synagogue. Shame on us. Here was a woman that couldn't even lift herself up. And where was she at? Where was she at? You know why she was in church? She wanted her healing. You got healing you want? You know where you better be? You better be in the church. God's got an order for you to do it by. He said, if there's any of us shift sick or afflicted among you, let him pray. And that goes for her too. If there's something wrong, are you praying? Are you seeking God? Or do you say, I'm too sick and I've got these aches and pains of giving that I can't come to the house of God? Shame on me. Shame on me. You tell me a woman that was bowed together from the day that she was born for 18 years was in the, in the synagogue and you tell me that we've got so much aches and pains that we can't come to the house of prayer? Shame on me. Shame on me. You know why this woman got her healing? Brother, she had faith and she knew what God could do. She knew she would get her healing if she did what God said. And you know what? She couldn't even move. Somebody had to take her to the house of prayer. If she was bowed together so bad that she couldn't even lift up her head, and I'll tell you what, don't that make you feel bad to go through the little ice and page that we might go through and we let them keep us apart from serving God and we stay home and say, I can go on. And you tell me this woman here that was bowed together, she had to have faith to have even somebody to bring her into the synagogue. But you know what? She was there. We get a little cold. We can't come to the house of prayer. You want your healing? You're not going to get it at home. You're going to have to be obedient to God's word, and you're going to have to move by faith. Every one of us is given a measure of faith. Amen? Amen. But do you use that measure that God has given you? If you don't use the measure of faith that God gives you, you know what? You're letting the devil take your joy away from you. The joy of the Lord is our strength tonight. But if we let the devil come in and we let him kill everything that we got and we let him steal everything that we have, whose fault is it? The devil can't take nothing unless you give it to him. Amen? You've got to give it to him. Now all these seducing spirits that's going on in the land today, these seducing spirits will talk to you and tell you that you're too tired to come to the house of prayer on Wednesday night. These seducing spirits will speak to you and say, I can't get out of bed Sunday morning to come to the house of prayer. These are seducing spirits that's seducing people and trying to make them believe that they're all right by staying home. You'll not get no deliverance by staying home. Amen? Amen. God answers faith. And if you have no faith, whose fault is it? When God says, forsake not to assemble yourselves together in a manner of such that it is, that shouldn't even have to be preached in the church. Shouldn't even have to be preached. Shouldn't even have to be taught on. But we, make, we take things and we make them wax. And we, we say, well, God will surely forgive me if I stay home one time. You know what? One time becomes another time. Then it gets to get easier. The more you stay home, the more you're going to stay home. 
And then after a while, you keep staying home and you begin to pick things up and you begin to wonder why. And then when you find out and you finally look around, you're going to find yourself outside. And maybe not outside looking around, but you might find yourself even on the church in the pew and you find yourself back still because you didn't do what God said to do. Amen? Sounds hard, but it's true. When I read this and I thought about this and I thought, my lands. Have you stayed home before because you wasn't feeling good? I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I gave in to the flesh. But when I read this, it made me feel this small. That this woman had enough faith to be in the synagogue when she was bowed together. 18 years. 18 years and she was bowed together. and couldn't even lift up her head. But listen to what he says. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. You know why she was loosed from her infirmity? Because she was being obedient to God. She was wanting to be in the house. She wanted to be in the synagogue or in the house of prayer. She knew that that's where her healing was going to be. If a person's got cancer or something like that or got a deadly disease, then they've got a right sometimes. You might not feel like coming to the house of God. But I've seen people carried into the house of God. If they're carried into the house of God, brother, they've got faith and they want to be healed. Amen? But a lot of times we listen to the old flesh and we listen to the devil and let the devil zap our joy and let him tell us, well, there's no use to coming to the house of God. Nobody wants to hear me. Nobody wants to do this. I'm jealous of all these people over here and nobody wants to hear me. Well, shame on us. We need to get out and take these old pity parties and throw them away and quit pitying ourselves and begin to serve God like God wants us to. But we listen to the old flesh. We let the devil take everything that we have. But you know what? It's just like we said the other day. Enough is enough. You've got to come to the point that you've got to realize something that you can save nobody else but yourself. He said, though Noah, Job, and Daniel was in this world, they could save no one else but their self. You will not be able to save nobody else but yourself. But what are you doing to do this? Are you being obedient to the Word of God? This is the only way. If I got a little ache or pain, I'd be ashamed to call somebody on the phone and not come to the house of God and tell, would you have the church to pray for me? I've got all these aches and I've got all these pains in my body. When Job said we're going to have pains in the flesh, these are things that we've got to learn that we've got to press your way through. When times you don't feel like going to the house of God, that could be the very same night that you stayed out that you could have had your healing if you'd have just listened to God instead of listening to the flesh and listening to the old devil. Because you know what? He's going to put every thought in your mind to try to keep you out of the house of prayer. There's people today who say, well, I don't think I have to come to church. Well, you know what? If you don't think that you kind of like come to the house of God, then you're not going to heaven either. Amen? I said amen? Amen. Amen. God's word means exactly what it says. Unless we're obedient to the word of God, then I'm not going. If I'm not obedient to God's word, then I'm not going. It's just that simple. But listen to what he says. He said to him, when he laid his hands on her, and when? The next day? He said, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Amen. Amen. Where did she get her healing? In the synagogue. Shame on us when we have all these aches. Little aches in her knees, little aches in her back. Little lake headache in her head, but yet we can't come to the house of God. Our faith is way down here. We need to have more faith, but how does faith come? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. If you're home, can you hear the Word of God? People say, oh yeah, I can hear it. I turn on my TV, I turn on my radio. Well, you ain't getting nothing but the sea. You're listening, to, you're listening to these seducing spirits. You know what a seducing spirit is? It's something to get you not off the straight and narrow path. It's something that will get you off that straight and narrow path. Things that we put before God that we don't want to listen to what God's Word says, but yet we want to listen to this.
this old flesh. And we want to play it for the flesh. And we want to have a little pity party for it. And we feel bad. To where and a lot of times we make ourselves feel sick. Yep. Amen. Hey, How many's ever got sick right before church? Or the devil will tell you that you're sick. I used to work with people. And people would look at somebody and say, watch this. They'd look at somebody and say, well, brother, you look awful pale. One old guy, well, he'd sit there for a minute. He goes, you know what? I don't feel good. And he'd sit there for a minute. And the guy would talk him right and feeling sick. And he would wind up going home. You know what? That's how this old flesh is. Yeah. I remember sitting one time when I was a sinner. And I'll tell you one thing. I hate this. It really, really got to me. I was sitting in a place eating. And here come these people in. And all they was talking about was their sickness and what kind of pills they were doing. Well, I don't want to hear that. My land, that's depressing. I want to hear good news. Amen. Amen. Too many things of depression that you you even talk yourself into being sick. You even talk yourself in to stay at home. You even talk yourself into doing things that God told you not to do. And you know what that is? That's just those seducing spirits telling you these things, and you take hold of them, and you start being obedient to what they, what they want you to do, rather than what God says to do. But yet we can't come to the house of prayer in order to get our healing. But yet we want to call somebody else up and tell them to pray for them. I believe in praying for people. But if you're able to pray for yourself, you need to learn to pray for yourself first. Amen. 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 This is what God wants. Listen. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. And said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work in them. Therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. They were jealous of what Jesus had done. But listen to what he said. Then the Lord said, answered and said, Thou hypocrite. Boy, don't that sound bad. Yeah, pretty strong. Huh? Is that strong? That's strong. Thou hypocrite. What would happen if somebody called you a hypocrite? You know what a hypocrite is? Somebody that pretended to be something that they're not. Do you think there's a lot of them in the world today? There's a lot. Do you think there's a lot of them in the church today? There's a lot in the so-called church today. But you know what? It's going to be God the one that's going to, going to divide, take them away. It's going to be God that's going to do the do it. It's not going to be me. Only thing that I can do is preach the Word. And you know what? It's the Word that starts to cut. It's sharp, sharper than a two-edged sword. It'll cut coming and it'll cut going. But I remember what Brother Bill used to say all the time. He said, you know what? It don't have to cut you. If we're living in a place where we're doing things that we ought not to do, you know what? Somebody's going to get up and somebody's going to use his sword and it's going to touch you. It'll even cut me if I'm not living where God wants me to do. It'll cut me. Things that I even say will come right back to me. But you know what? If I'm doing things contrary to the Word of God, is it God's fault? I've heard people today say, well, you need to pray for me. You don't know what I'm going through. Well, I know it might not go what you're going through, but God does. And just like I said a while ago, the Bible says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We need to stand on our belief. We need to stand on faith and believe God. And God said, I'll put no more upon you than you're able to bear. And you know, a lot of times when you look back, when you went through something, and you turn around and you say, my lands, how did I ever go through that? I'll tell you how you, you was obedient to God. And when you look back and you see what God did, then you can turn around and you can glorify God for bringing you through all the trials and all the troubles that you go through. You know, it's easy to just throw up your hands and say, I quit. You know, anybody can do that, but it takes a man or it takes a woman to serve God according to His Word. Is everybody doing it according to the Word of God? No. Does that mean that they're going to go to heaven? You're going to answer for the Word of God. You know what? I don't know where people is, but you know where you're at. And most importantly, God knows where you're at. And you know what? Every time one of these days when we stand before God, you're going to give an account of everything that you did in this body, whether it be good or whether it be evil. God knows where you're at. There is people today, the devil put it in mind that there are people's minds that just say, well, nobody's going to see me do this. People's not going to see me do that. Well, people might not see you, but it don't make no difference whether people see you or not. You know what? Because it's going to be God that's going to judge us, and God's the only one. And he sees everything that you and I do. Even in secret, he knows what you're doing. He knows your very thoughts tonight. But listen. 
He said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And now listen to this. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom who's bound him? Who bound him? Satan had bound for how long? For her for 18 years he had, had her bound. Satan did it. But you know what? When she kept going to the house of prayer and her faith, I'll tell you what, when God answers faith tonight and if you've got enough faith to do what God says, God will answer his prayers and God will heal your body tonight. I'll tell you what, I believe in healing, but I'll tell you, as for these little old things that goes on, our aches and pains, you've got to press your way through them. Because you're going to have aches and you're going to have pain in this old place. Don't think that you're going to get rid of it because you... I'll tell you what, a lot of it's old age. <laughs> Amen? Amen. A lot of it's old age and you're not going to get out. Everybody that's old and even a lot of young people go through aches and pains. Amen? Amen? But can't you see that this is just a tactic to the devil to try to get you to stay home, to try to get you out of the house of God because he knows God has got something for you? But if you stay out and not be obedient to the word of God, then God will never be able to work through you. But yet we say we want our healing. But what are you doing in order to get it? We don't want to do it. We think, boy, God's so big. And you know, God can do whatever he wants to do. But you know what? God answers faith. And if we don't have enough faith to believe what God's word says, do you think you're going to get your healing by staying at home? You think you're going to get your healing by doing against the word of God? There was ten lepers at one time. They come to the Lord, and the Lord healed all ten of them. All ten, all ten of them. But how many turned around and give God the glory? Only one. He said, didn't I heal ten? In other words, where's the other nine that I healed? Didn't I heal the all, all ten of them? But yet only one returned to give him glory. You know what? It's a, it, it, it's a fearful thing today, the Bible says, to fall in the hands of the living God. I've seen people come to the house of God and I've seen people come and dedicate their babies to God. And you know what? When you dedicate a child to God then you're, you're saying, Lord, I'm giving this child to you. And if you would happen to back up on God and you take it out here and you begin to go to places that you ought not to be going to, God can take that very child just that quickly. Yes, he could. But people don't fear God. He said, if you fear me, he said, what did he say to do? He said, keep his commandments. He said, for my commandments are not grievous. We make him grievous because we don't want to be obedient to him. We don't want to do what God says to do. We want to listen to the old flesh and let the old flesh give us a pity party until we believe everything that we feel in this old body. I know God's a healing God. And I know God can do all things because there's nothing that's impossible with God. But don't this make you feel this small when you see this woman here that was bowed together for 18 years coming to the synagogue and then we have little aches and pains that comes in us and we say we can't come. When God says to forsake not the assembling of yourselves together in the manner of such is, don't you think, don't you look at this, can't you see how this makes you feel? I'll tell you, it should make us all feel this small tonight, but this woman had that much faith, but yet we say we want to see things happen, but yet we're not willing to work for what God wants us to have. Amen. Amen. God will work, but you've got to let him. Are you letting him work in your life? Are you being obedient to the word of God to where he can work in your life? You can't do go against the word of God and think that you're going to get healing tonight. But I'll tell you what, too many people are listening to the flesh and listen to what the old seducing spirits get in their mind and try to tell them that they, instead of trying them by the word of God, how do you try the spirits? He said, let them try the spirits. How do we try these old spirits? By the word of God. By the word of God. If it's in the word of God, that's how you try. Look in and see what God's word says. Don't rely on this old flesh. It'll get you in trouble. Your feelings will get you in trouble. If we're listening to what the old flesh says rather than to what the word of God says. This word is going to stand when the world is on fire. Amen? My feelings, they're going to go away. I see people, they, they'll come in. I, I thought about this a lot too. You know, the Bible says that the sower, he went to sow the seed. 
But you know what? Listen to this. You know what? Before he could sow that seed, before that farmer could sow that seed, what happens to the ground? It's got to be, that ground's got to be broke up. But listen to this. A lot of days, a lot of times, and in a lot of churches, people just keep quiet. They plow the ground, but they never sow no seed. If you never sow no seed, what's going to happen? There's nothing going to be brought forth. I see churches today, they'll sing, they'll sing, and they'll sing, and they'll sing, and they'll sing. They'll sing all night, they'll shout all night, but never sow no seed. Now what's important? The Word of God. But first that ground's got to be plowed, but you can't keep plowing the ground and never plant no seed. What's it going to profit if you don't plant no seed? Amen. Just a bunch of weeds. That's right, sister. Just a bunch of weeds. But you know what? That's what's wrong with the world today. The world don't want to see. They don't want to hear the Word of God. They, they, people today will get mad and they'll something, somebody will say something and they'll hear something preached in the church and they'll say, well, I don't have to listen to that. No, you don't. That's up to you. He said, serve you this day. Choose you this day whom you will serve. That's up to you. That's up to me. And But I'll tell you what, if the Word of God says something, one thing about it, you'll not be able to run from the Word of God. I don't care where you go, where people go tonight. If you're not doing what God says to do, then they're going to come up short. Amen? Listen. All right, we'll go on this lesson a little bit. Being faithful. And boy, I'll tell you, this really, this really means something not by faith, being faithful. We need yeah. to be more faithful to God. Every one of us, I do. And listen to what he says, Psalms 12 and 1. He said, help, Lord, for the godly man ceases. For the what? The faithful fell from the children of men. You know what? We're not home yet. We're just a pilgrim passing through this whole world. Our home's on the other side. But you know what? You've got to keep the walk. You've got to take one step at a time, one day at a time, and you've got to be obedient to the Word of God if you want to make it to the other side. Because this is not our home. When the children of Israel was going around in the wilderness for 40 years, you know what God was getting rid of? He was getting rid of all the unbelief. Many of them began to fall. But it took us 40 years to get rid of that generation. The Bible says, listen to what he says. Today, we're living in a sinful generation. Everybody today, they think they're all right. It don't make no difference what they do. They can just stay out of church and still say, I'm a Christian. But shame on you, you're lying on God. If people believe they can be a Christian and stay out of the house of prayer, you're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving yourself. It's impossible. It's impossible. Like I said the other night, a part-time Christian will never, will never defeat a full-time devil. Amen? You'll never defeat a full-time devil if you're a part-time Christian. Too many part-time Christians today when we need full-time people. If you had a job and you was working a job, you'd expect your pay at the end of that week, wouldn't you? Well, what kind of Christian are we tonight? If we go into the house of God and do what God says, would you have a payday at the end of the week? Would you have a payday? Or would you come up short? That's what we need to ask ourselves. Are we doing all that we know to do? And we think and we say, just I'm just using this just as an excuse tonight. Are these things that just uh, about coming to the house of God? But there's other things that we can be faithful in. Not just by coming to the house of prayer. But we can take part in the service every time that the doors are open. Amen? We can be faithful by standing up and giving testimonies. We can be faithful by standing up and praising God and telling the Lord what we tell the devil what the Lord's did for us, how the God has delivered you from sin. We can get, we do all these things and sing and praise God because that's God God what God wants. He said, Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. How many tonight praises the Lord? Somebody will say, Raise your hands and praise the Lord. Part of them will say here, they'll not put up their I ain't putting my hands up. Huh? We listen to the flesh. We listen to these seducing spirits that comes upon us. If somebody tells you to raise your hands and praise God, what's wrong with that? Are you are you ashamed? Are you ashamed? When he tells you to come up here and pray, part of them will sit back 
Lord, I will come forward. What's wrong? Can't we pray? You know what? God answers prayers. God answers prayers. But you know what? If we're never praying, are you going to get your answer? Huh? God answers what His Word says. God works through faith. But if we have no faith, and we have unbelief in us, we need to ask God to get it out of us. Amen? Do you think his apostles had, had, do you think that they had unbelief in them? They sure did. 16th chapter of the book of Mark will tell you that he upbraided them for their unbelief. And that's what we need. We say, Lord, I believe, but get all this unbelief that's in me, get it out of me. I want to go with you. How many wants to go with the Lord tonight? I want to go with him, but I know there's things that I've got to do.